Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be diving into a video about automation pitching effects in Reaper. So I've got a track here. This is actually a track that I won King of the Riff in November last year. So as you can see here, I've got my session here. And in this video, I'll show you the finished result here with all the automation that you can see on screen here. See, so I've got like pitch shifting effects and all different stuff for automating the plugins. So I'll show you the finished result, how to set it up and do it manually. If you want to do it from scratch, and also if you want to check the link down below, I'll have my Patreon where you can grab free resources on this. And I've also got like a paid tier as well, where you can get like the full mix down of the tones and everything. So interest in that link below, but in this video, I'll walk you through step-by-step step how to achieve this. These are the DI tracks here and they're feeding into this guitar amp, which all this automation here is set up. And you can see here, these are all the automation items that I've drawn in. And especially here, you can see all the transposing here. So it goes from zero and then it drops down to negative three, negative six. You can see there's like a dive bomb. So we'll take a listen and see what it sounds like and I'll walk you through it. So what you're going to need for this, if you want to get this exact setup with the templates that I've got on my Patreon, there'd be one for like a free sort of alternative. Like if you don't have Gojira, that's the um, guitar amp you're going to need for all these effects. If you don't have that, you can use something like the pitch shifting effect within Reaper, the pitch shifter two, which I'll show you that as well. But ideally you want to have the Gojira amp like this, like I've got set here. So I'm only just using the pedal part of this for this one here. So I'm automating the blade section here, the pedal and on and off like the octave pedal here. I'll just quickly play the automations with this so you can actually see the other amps. I'm actually doing the transpose in Fortin, but the template I'll give you guys will have the transpose all done in the automation from Gojira if you go with that one. So what I'll do is I'll play from this part here where all this automation is happening and I'll show you these two plugins and you can see what's happening real time. So you can see that on Fortin, the transpose was automating and you can see the pedals and stuff here were automating as well. So the way to do that, so if you're starting from a blank session here to set that as automations up in Reaper. So I've got Gojira here, open up just a blank one here. The way to do the automation and set it up like in Reaper, there's a couple ways. So the first option is you can right click here, the track envelopes and automations, and you're gonna see down here, you're gonna see effects parameters and you'll actually see the plugins that you've actually got. I've only got one plugin on here so you can see all the things we can activate. So if we want to activate, for example, the pedal here, we can go wow pedal and that will turn on our automation here. You can see now it's there and we can um, control and we can draw in sort of any automations that we'd like. And we can also just do points like that and drag to sort of pitch it up, whatever it's doing there. So it's hundred percent, that's to zero. So depending on what, envelope you're automating will have different effects. Some are bypass, some will have the transpose. So it'll go from semitones to maybe to 24, depending on the pedal part there. So I'll just remove that one. So that's the first way to add automations for anything in the plugin or any plugin. Second way to do it is just to click on that button itself and that's gonna open up all of everything here. So you can see the normal automations you can do like volume, mute, which is separate from the plugins. 
And you can see here, this is our VST plugin here, Gojira, and we've got the input. We can do, you know, the pedal, octaves, basically anything that's on the plugin there, we can automate. So this one here, we can hit the transpose, we could arm it and it hits all three. And you can see here it's at zero. So let's find a part that we want to transpose. So this first part of the track here, you can see there's uh, two notes here. So one note that goes there and one open note that goes there. So we want to add See, the first one was actually negative three. And then I had negative six for the second one. So those two open notes. So I can just basically a couple ways to do this. So you could just draw it in like that and drag it down. But then you've got to add extra like nodes here to bring it back up and move it around. So that's one way you can just draw it in like that. But the better way that I like to do is get your selection tool like I've just done there and just highlight the note that you have. So I've got this whole note sounds like this. So now I've got it selected on that note. We know we want to drop it three semitones. So what we can do is I like to right click and then you can go to automation items. Then you want to go to insert new automation item and it's going to bring this up here. And this is really awesome. If you haven't used automation items, they're a lifesaver and they've got a lot of great uses and it just speeds everything up. So you can see here that zero transpose. So if I open up the plugin, you can see here, here's our transpose. So what we can do is we can drag it down to negative three. So now see it's on zero, move the cursor over and it's going to drop negative three. And to reset them, you can double click the nodes here and that brings them back up to the unity. So whatever it was set to zero, we can drag it down to whatever we want, negative four, negative three. So I'll drag that one back up to negative three. And for the second node, it was negative six. So we can do the same thing. We can right click in that space and then go to automation items, insert new automation item. It's just gonna fill in that selection and then we can drop it negative six. Now also you can also click here on those nodes if you want to be precise and you can go set value and it's going to open up this little value box here and you can actually type in whatever semitones that you want to go down. So if you're finding a little bit of trouble getting the right semitones to drop, you can actually get a precise number there by just right clicking the nodes, especially if you're drawing them in manually like this and you want to click and set the node to a certain value. So that's how I'd set up the transpose there using automation items just for like a straight dip. But you can also ramp things. So you might want to do a different technique, which I'll show in a minute here. But while we're still on automation items, one thing is really cool is you can just copy them and you can just paste them wherever. So we could paste it over to this next section if we wanted to. Obviously it doesn't go over that part, but we can paste them as much as we like and just keep pacing them. And then we've got all these automation items. Another cool thing about them as well is if you're doing, say if you're in the writing process, you're not quite sure and you don't know what semitones you wanna drop them by, you can actually create a pull duplicate. So if you right click on this, we've got negative six. So if we wanna create a duplicate, go create pulled duplicate. Now, if I drag this over here and you can see it's at negative six. So if I drag it down to say negative 11, See how this one changes as well. So now we have two pulling down at the same time. So or going up semitones. This is really useful. So you're not creating like all different ones. Say like if you're not quite sure if you want to have a negative six semitone for the key or you, want, you don't want that flexibility. And you know, it just makes it a lot easier. So you can create it on its own or you can create a duplicate that sort of mimics what you're doing. So it's good for volume automations and stuff like that as well. Things that are repeated. So I'll delete that one. You can see once I delete that one, it still remains with our original one. So very useful. So the next one I want to show you is the like pedal effect here. So this is like that screech effect that you get with, you know, Thor music. So it sounds like this. So if I solo the guitars, so you can actually hear it just on its own. And it's this blue automation here. You can see it ramps up and then it ramps down and it's the wow pedal in Gojira. And if I open up the plugin here and let's take a look and let's play and see what the plugin's doing with that automation. Now there's a lot going on there, but basically you can see the pedal going up and down. So I'll show you the way to set that and build that out. So I covered the two ways so far, how we can add our effects from automation here on our plugin. So the one way here was going to here and finding the plugin or actually clicking the track envelope automation here and selecting it. But what if you just want to use the plugin and just drag and drop like the pedal here and you want to say drag it like this and 
create automation, you can do that. So all you need to do is right click here and then change it to touch. And then if I press play and then move this pedal, see how it drew in this blue automation here. So once you're finished doing this automation, you can see that's where we're dragging the plugin pedal up and down and see here it's still in yellow. So you want to change that back to what it was, which is trim and read. So basically if we go back into our plugin, it's not going to create any more automations. Like if we're moving it or touching anything else on the plugin. So it's, Otherwise it will keep writing automations if you're changing settings and you don't want that. So you kind of want to set it. And then once you've got it in here, you can just delete. Maybe you want to kind of do it manually like that. If you like have a expression pedal or you just like to move the automation manually like that, you can do that for a feel. But what I did was in that part, this part here, so it's going to sound weird because there's no effects on it so far. So for that, all I did was I hit control and then I put four points here in that bar part there. So in this section, you can see here, let's zoom in a bit, we've got four nodes and you can see they're, they're at um, zero. I'll drag them right down so they're at zero percent. So you can see now it's at zero, that one's at zero on the outside. And then these two here, I just dragged the middle of them and they stay even. So it's sort of mimicking how your foot would go down on a pedal. So you'd kind of ramp it down and ramp it back up. Um, so I tried to do it how you would sort of play it, I guess. So just a basic one like that, instead of just being all squared off like that. So you could square it off, but which sounds like this. It does sound all right, but I prefer to have it a little bit of a ramp. Kind of has that like screechy, like it has a better sound in my opinion, as you can probably hear. I like it. So you can actually set this up in Reaper and you can have like, as you play along, it just does all the automations as well. So when you're playing along to the track, you can have all these automations set and just play along and it'll just do these automations. So you don't have to physically touch anything. It's all set in stone for when you're jamming the song or writing like this. That would cover you with most things. Now there's another technique called like a dive bomb. So you can see here on screen how it sort of goes down from five, negative five semitones all the way down to negative 12. So it's a dive bomb and it sounds like this. So it's basically just diving straight down and you could do this either way. You could do it going up, but to do that here, you can see it will do it for this part here. So I'll just make a selection here and we can use the transpose option here if we would like. Now, as I said, you can use other plugins. You don't have to have, you know, this amp here. Say if you don't have it and you don't have this pedal. So Let's open up a free version here. So, so in Reaper, we can search for Pitch Shifter 2 here. And we'll put this at the start here before any amp effects because you want to have everything that's pitching before any distortion. Now you can see with this plugin here, it's got you know, sense, it's got semitones, and it's got octaves. So what we can do is we can use one of our techniques to find what we would need. So let's find, we want to use the semitones one here. So again, we can use the three options. There's more options to do the automations, but that's the three I like to use. So the touch one, we can do this one and just press play and we can drag the slider. Make sure we go back, right click here and set it back to trim and read. And you can see it drew in all this automation here, which we don't want. So we can just delete that. And it's going to be at default at zero, which is great. So it's pretty easy. Just add your node in like we did earlier. We're control click, just make three nodes like that. And then we can just drag this last one down and make sure this one goes back to zero. So pretty straightforward there and pretty easy. I think you can even hold alt. And if you hold alt, you can kind of curve it if you really like to do that as well. Um, so mine is just a linear. I think the linear sounds fine because that's pretty much what would happen. Sort of a curve like that might sound cool. Let's try it out. Yeah, it's sort of like dives a little bit quicker, has a different feel. So you can experiment with both of those, but I like the linear line there. So that's basically all you really need to know. You can kind of play around and make as many automations as you like, automating different effects and pedals. And that's the main ones, the sort of screech effect and some dive bombs and just some transposing. Um, so you can do anything creatively, like you can see here. Um, for this little section, I actually did like a linear pitch up where it goes from zero semitones up to plus four. 
So, and that sounds like this. There, I was just doing some like harmonic thing there and you can see you can get pretty creative there and make some unique sounds that you wouldn't have otherwise and experiment with them. If you want this exact template here that I've got here, this is the one that I made for just the Gojira here. See, it's all, it's just for this amp here. So you can open up this session here and this template and sort of get an idea, maybe dissect it and tweak it and play around with the audio and see what it's doing. And on my Patreon as well, I've got the full song for this one with the guitar tabs, with all the pitch shifting. So you can see that and dissect it as much as you like if you want to recreate that sound. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.